a home track. It's a big day for her, Richie. Richie? Hey, what about that? It's a big day for her, Guelph, here. Um, we draw conclusions that she was unlucky and things went against her and she was still, still disappointing. But it's a big day for her home here and she needs to... You know, she's been here at the track once before and it was a dominant win on her home track. She's two out of two, second up. Um, 1,400 metres, she's got a great record, two out of two. Big day for her here today to fire and show that the, although things went against her, that was the only reason why she didn't win. She can't knock her the way she's come back here. Number two is Sweet Idea. She's a great filly. She's won five from ten, $1.6 million in earnings. She went to the front in the light fingers. They couldn't catch her, and I, I dare say, Rich, the same tactical, tactics will be there today. You won't have to look too far to see where she'll be in the run. We've had two great fillies and two horses here. Um, I think she'll do what she did in, in the race at Remy. Like you said, I think she'll sit outside Champagne Cath. Um, no knocking it. She rolls forward. She's tough. Five. Never missed a place. Rock hard. Uh, not rock. Yeah. Pretty as fit as you'll get her. You're not going to get her much fitter. She's tough. Tommy knows how to ride her. And when there's the going gets tough, she finds. Number three is Thump. She also comes through the light finger stakes. She was midfield there first up. And the blinkers go back on. The blinkers back on and up to 14. Um, she just looked too big. Things didn't fire first up. I think you'll see a better run. But I think you'll see a better run again, the one after this one again um, for her. I reckon she's just taking it a little bit tighter compared to a few others to get that race fitness into her. Number four is Gypsy Diamond. Uh, of course, she comes through the light fingers, a slashing return there. She was second to Sweet Idea. Nice bar. I thought she was outstanding at Ramwick. I thought she was outstanding. Um, if she can just be within earshot and get the right run, I think she's come on. Perhaps a lot of people are thinking, oh, she wants further now that she's had that first up zip, and she may. But I think at the big odds, she's a gamble. Number five, Real Surreal. She was fourth in the light fingers off a very long break, and you'd think she'd come on a little bit fitness-wise. I, I, I agree with you, Richard, that this, this filly's a player. Like, such a long 13, 13 months off, or just over 13 months. I thought her run was super, and she's only, gonna, she's only taken benefit from that. Um, she's a big player here for sure. There's no doubt about that. Looks well, just gets that little bit of cover again here. I don't want to knock her, Hainsey, and that's why I think it's such a tough race. Number six is Champagne Cath. She was third in the Light Finger Stakes, and she's a big price here again. Well, she'll roll forward. She's got to hold them off here at 1,400 metres, and, 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 that's the, and, and that's the bit against her today, whether she runs a 14 in this grey. But you know what she is? She just cruises at her own speed. Jay Ford, like Glenn Schofield on Boban. This filly runs for Jay Ford, and she'll give him something to chase. Number seven is Arabian Gold. Thought a run in the light fingers first up was more than satisfactory. I couldn't help but notice barrier 11 last start, gate four today. Yeah, I, she's the type of filly, though, that's got to have room to, to wind into a race. She doesn't want to, particularly over these shorter trips. Nice barrier. Her first up run was good. Whether she wants that a little bit further, like Gypsy and a few others, but she'll be hitting the line. Number eight, Zanbar, continues on a, a, an Oaks campaign. She's second up here. Yeah, she was at a top most of the way the other day in, in the light fingers. Her run was good. I think you'll see her do it again. I think when she gets to the 2,000, that's when you're really going to see Zanbar hit her straps in this grade. You've got to remember when she was going through last time, she was going through average benchmark filly, ma fillies and mares races. Number nine, Lucia Valentina adds a bit of interest here. Now with Chris Lees, former Kiwi mare, Hugh Bowman to ride. She's had two months between the runs. She did. She now comes back from 2,000 to this trip. And with it, this is probably going to be a little bit short but let me tell you I can tell you Hugh Bowman chose this filly over Chateau Lafay so the, the, the raps must be huge for this Savabille filly um, you got to have a peanut on it just for that for, for Huey Bowman who's no mug he's had a great result with Kiwi fillies and he's got another smart one here Number 10 is Shadow Lafay, reduced choice filly out of Newland Princess lovely pedigree backs her up and she resumes today yeah, of course the sister to Royal Descent and she's a little bit soft um, because you'd imagine she's going to be getting better over further but her trial was outstanding. Um, if she can get the opportunity to get a card in a race and just have a crack at them for a... Um, I don't want to knock her. She got a bit of class about her, this girl. Made to water, number 11. had a couple of months between the runs. Yeah, look, and, and she's getting ready now for an Oaks campaign after having that freshen up. And this is her toughest grey. She's taking on a lot better horses than she's ever raced against this time in. So she, she's got to now step up into the better races. You can probably put number 12, Momello, in the same bracket. I, I, most definitely, Richard. I think you got that right. Um... This won't be their day, but perhaps later in the preparation is when they'll come into their own over the staying trips. And number 13, Metaphorical, is up from Melbourne. She was third in the Angus Amanasco last start. A good run behind Spirits Dance. Mary Ann. Mary Ann come out and ran a great race today, running second uh, behind Solicit. So, an honours, but uh, this looks that little bit too tough. Tips here. Uh, I'm going to go for the big odds here. 
Number four, Gypsy Dime. Just think it's huge odds. Sixteen dollars now into fourteen. Two, sweet idea. Five, real surreal, and one Guelph. Four, two, five, and one. Mark Newham, the right-hand man to Gay Waterhouse, is in Melbourne, of course, with Fiorinde, the Australian Cup winner. They train sweet idea here, and Mark's with Richie. Yeah, Mark joined us. You got to catch up from Melbourne, as you just mentioned. Uh, but sweet idea is a great chance to put the win on the board today. How's she training? Yeah, fantastic. She's done really well since the first up win. Um, you know, she's probably improved a touch, no doubt, you know, plenty of the others have too, but, you know, she's never run badly. She's probably the underestimated filly out of, out of the really good group of high quality fillies. Um, she's the one that's probably paid the least attention, but she's got the runs on the board. You just know what you're going to get with her every time. She's going to go out there, she'll be on the speed and she'll be damn hard to get past. Yeah, and that's what she does. So, you know, any, any, any horse that beats her has certainly earned it. Uh, just quickly, the last race of the day, our Desert Warrior. Um, dislodged a tooth in the stewards report last start. Um, how's he working towards his race today? Oh look, he's been a little frustrating because he goes out there and you know naturally he's well supported because he's he's got a little bit of a profile. But he's probably just found the you know the rating system bumping him up 15 points for running second in a in a group two. That you know he's found he's found that level quite quickly. He's trained on really well, so there's no, you know no excuses for him as far as his training and condition goes. But um, you know, look, Jimmy will ride him aggressively, and that was probably the choice of Gay to, you know, change a jockey. Jimmy can sometimes switch these horses on, and, you know, horses that aren't quite winning, he can, you know, quite often find the key to them. Uh, we've got Charon Cross in the race, who's, who's done well also, and he enjoys coming to Warwick Farm. Okay, best of luck with the filly for a start. Great, thanks. Mark Newnham joining us, and uh, Rich, sweat idea, a great chance, as always. Most definitely. Yorkie, what did you think of these fillies? Well, Richie, I'm going to stick with the sweet idea. I thought she looked terrific in the yard too. As Mark just said, she hasn't taken a backward step. So she may be underrated. Uh, and she won well enough last time. The way she looks, she's going to be hard to beat again. I thought number seven, Raby in gold. Gee, this horse looks really well in the coat and very healthy too. Real shine about it in the eye and that sort of thing too. So I put that her in. And I thought number one, Guelph, well, she's uh, the big girl. She looks good. We're going to give her a chance here. She's had to be in the top three. Uh, Richie, I went 2-7-1. and one. Thank you very much, Brian. This is the market move. We'll go down the board. Guelph, 360 to 290. Big go now. Sweet ideas back out to $3. Stump, 26 into 21. 16 into 15. Gypsy Diamond. Real Surreal, $10 into 8. Champagne Cath at $21. Arabian Gold, 12 into 11. Zanbar at $21. 41. Lucia Valentina. Chateau Lafay is $14. Made to order, 101. So is Marmello. And Metaphorical, $71. Market mover here at Warwick Farm for the Group 2, 3 old Philly surround stakes is number one, Guelph, 360 to 270. I assume a lot of the punters had butted up and turned her into $2.20 in the light fingers and said, right, we're going to get our money back. Guelph, 360 into 270. Mark Sheen, the return to a home track, a little bit quieter, I assume, in the run, and the punters have plonked on her, 360 to 270, and real surreal is 10 into 650. Yeah, it didn't look like she'd start favourite Guelph, but she's outright favourite now, and Sweet Idea's out to 310 as a result of that money for Guelph and also for Real Surreal. So, big change to the market in the last couple of minutes, and they're moving up into the stalls. Now, they're coming in, and uh, Champagne, Cath and Metaphorical are the first uh, couple of fillies to move up for the surround stakes. Always been a very good race over the years, and Guelph... 360 into 270, a bit shorter on the toe to 260, and they're going to try and ride her a little bit further back in the field with some cover today. She was trapped uh, on a limb first up and uh, looked dis disappointing on face value, but uh, she could easily bounce back. She had uh, great form through the spring, of course, winning races such as the Flight and the T Rose, and winning the Sires and the Champagne as a two year old. Now about four to move up. Lucia Valentina's away with Sweet Idea Marmello and Guelph is also out of the stalls. Now Marmello is uh, moving up towards the gates near the centre. Now Guelph is coming up. Red light is switched on. They'll be underway shortly. Are you ready? Hang on. No, not really. 
And they're off now. Well, Guelph probably came out a little bit behind them, missed it by about a half a length. Sweet Idea Insider began fast. Thumper's going forward along the inside, and they're the leaders in the first hundred or so, and Champagne Cath now going up along the rail. Then in behind them, Marmello, followed by Arabian Gold, Metaphorical picking up ground on the rail, followed by Gypsy Diamond. And then in the next group there, Made to Order, followed by Chateau Le Fay. Guelph ended up uh, near the back of the field and out pretty wide early on, but looks like she's got a bit of a trail there, followed by... By Zanbar, Lucia, Valentina and Marmello's ended up near the back. So Champagne Cath now took over. It came up along the inside to hit the lead and led from Sweet Idea. Trump's on the outside in third spot, or Thumper should say. Then Arabian Gold followed by Real Surreal. At the head of the others next is Metaphorical Made to Order. Gypsy Diamond in the centre followed by Guelph. Then Lucia, Valentina and then Chateau Le Fay well back with Zanbar and Marmello last of all. They're preparing to swing here. Champagne Cath, Sweet Idea in the centre and Thump on the outside followed by Real Surreal, Arabian Gold and Guelph still about three or four lengths off the lead as they come up to the 250 metre mark. Thump's now moved up to hit the lead from Real Surreal Sweet Ideas struggling and Guelph is only battling for the moment. Real Surreal is coming after this leader over the concluding stages. Thump is in front but Thump's going to hang on and beat Real Surreal Thump beat Real Surreal. Third's tight. Lucia Valentina on the inside. Gypsy Diamond and Zanbar and then we've got Arabian Gold followed by Marmello and then Sweet Idea and Guelph. Well, they were both disappointing, followed by Champagne Cath, Chateau Le Fay and Made to Order at the back of the field. Uh, Jimmy Cassidy. He continues to amaze. I thought it might have needed one more, but it gets the job done today. Well done to Jimmy Cassidy. Well done to Chris Lee's thump. Now under the care of Chris Lees is Philly by Red Ransom. She wins the Group 2 surround stakes. Real Surreal was very good, second up from a long break. And perhaps the eye catcher might be the Kiwi filly right up along the inside. Lucia Valentina, the filly by Savabil. She looks to be prominent for third. But Chris Lees, the gang from Newcastle, thump. They win and a good Jimmy Cassidy ride. The favourites, Sweet Idea and Guelph, most disappointing. Yeah, Jimmy, it was a good bustling ride by Jimmy too, Richie. Look, he, uh, he made a bit of use of her early and uh, really made her, he put her mind on the job and really made her race. And... Uh, she, she, she responded to that and she's run on very well in the straight here once she got to the outside obviously in better ground out there too she finished off very well but gee Guelph I don't know what to make of her she's sort of not um, really performing at all and, and Sweden idea was terrible because she was she raced in a customary position and seemed to travel very well but found nothing yeah maybe these have come back that little bit stronger with improvement Guelph the big question marks over her I said that earlier um, real concerning it was a big day for her, and she was disappointing today. Gypsy Diamond went super. I know it didn't win, I tipped it. That's it, finishing, charging through the middle there. Gypsy Diamond, she went super duper. She just couldn't sprint with being second up at the trip, and uh, I wouldn't be surprised if she grabbed... She did grab fourth. Uh, disappointing if you backed it each way. My top pick at $16 runs fourth. 3594, Chris Lees. He's the king of Newcastle, and he'd be pretty happy. Yeah, Chris, uh, Thumb, she's always been a, a more than handy filly and a, a big group two next to name today. Oh, for sure. Look, she come, come to us with some pretty pretty smart form next to her name. So um, a little disappointed in her run the other day, but um, it was like she was, lost a little bit of interest. She was back further than we expected. So um, at Jimmy's recommendation, we put the blinkers back on and I think it switched her on. She was in closer attendance today and she really knuckled down well. She did. She had a bit of a fight on her hand. She probably got out to the better part of the track, but... Um, She's a nice filly, and as I said, you know, I think I expected more the other day, so she's back where we expected. She was always going to be better over the seven furlongs. Uh, where to with a filly like this now? Well, she's un she hadn't proven herself for that trip, so I have to reassess whether you, you know, you may even consider a race like the Coolmore now, but um, we'll let the dust settle. Okay. Uh, you, do you, you come here with expectations, you hope. I mean, you're taking on some very good fillies. Well, again, you know, it was a it was the first start for us last last preparation, but she had measured up against these type of horses, so. That's what you, know, you expect of them. Lucia Valentina? She looked pretty smart. I, haven't, I want to watch the replay, but um, I'm happy just with just dismounted. You're out of the race with a couple of nice ones. Well done. I think so. There is Chris Lee's uh, winning trainer with Thump, and of course Lucia Valentina going well also. We might get you to run out or get to Jill Murphy. Uh, just doesn't seem too concerned. She looks okay, but Huey's just dismounted there, bringing Lucia Valentina back into the enclosure. She was a cracker to run at third. Three, five, nine, four. The margins here were a neck by one, one twenty three, five, seven, thirty five, forty two. So we might get uh, Jill just to go and ask if we can find out a neck by a length. But Jimmy Cassidy, he continues to amaze. 
Uh, a double last Saturday, a double on Wednesday, and another winner here this afternoon. And clickety clack, whatever you want to call him, he's on fire and he's with Hainsey. Yeah, Jim Cassidy, uh, winning rider of the, the surround stakes aboard this promising Philly thump. We'll have a chat to you, Jimmy. Um, Blinkers back on today. She was in much closer attendance. Yeah, look, she ran disappointing at Randwick the other day. Uh, she showed no speed that she's shown previous. So I suggested to Chris, put a set of blinkers on her and uh, make her get up there and concentrate. You know, she was probably always uh, sus to run seven, but she ran seven strong today with the blinkers on. And uh, look, she's just gone from one extreme to the other. She's gone from a hard running filly to a very relaxed filly, so, which is a plus because the way she's run seven today, I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't ride out her, her running a little bit further. And beaten some pretty promising fillies in the process. Well, the best we got in Sydney. Well done. Yep. There is uh, Jimmy Cassidy. Uh,